So getting back to the description, what happened was that there were a group of people, many of them from our first century experience, who had a very passionate and strong desire to connect with God. So the Apostle John and his soulmate from the first century, uh, both males, were the ones who had the next strongest desire given also their background in the first century. So, so their background in the first century was that John met me at a relatively young age. I had spent a lot of my years before I became at one with God working with them. I used to work fixing their nets as fishermen. So, um, so when I lived in Capernaum, which is a place on the Sea of uh, Galilee um, in the first century, what would happen was that I, I would obviously interact, written to relate with them and spend a lot of time talking about God and talking about truth and talking about things that were becoming truth for me. Now, as a result of that, obviously, they developed a lot of interest in the truth as well, just like many of you have done, just by our interactions, you know, with regard to hearing different aspects of truth. And, and a strong friendship developed between myself and, and John and his brother uh, as well, James, and also others uh, who worked Peter was one of those who worked as a fisherman and he, you know, there was a bond that got developed in, the, in that process. But that be, being the case, not all of those people dealt with their emotions. In fact, very few of them while I was on earth in the first century dealt with any emotions. Um, and in fact, um, Mary probably dealt with her emotions the most and then John was probably the next person who dealt with his emotions. Um, but after that, many of the men in particular struggled uh, dealing with any emotions and many of the women were very oppressed and in states of heightened fear and so they found it quite difficult some, at times also to deal with their emotions while they were on earth. So what happened for many was that uh, they still acted out many of their emotional issues while they were on earth. So the Apostle Peter for example, who you call the Apostle Peter, Peter, uh, my friend Peter, he, he uh, was a man who had a lot of issues with women, he had a lot of uh, uh, feelings of um, dominance over women. He, uh, he had a feeling of care for them as well, but more in an autocratic, authoritarian manner. Um, he felt he knew better than women. He felt that women uh, shouldn't be considered. And uh, in many occasions, he actually didn't consider women, even when he was traveling with me and following me around on earth. Now, when he, obviously, when he passed, he had a lot of emotions to deal with about that. Does that make sense? which actually finishes up retarding his progression in the spirit world as well. Because when you're in a state where you feel deserved of your position, and that position is an, a position of oppressing others, there are actually more damaging emotions in your soul to actually release than there is if you were in the state of being oppressed by the other. Does that make sense to everyone? The, the actual process of oppressing another person creates more soul damage within yourself than being oppressed by another person does. Now, because of that, when Peter passed over, obviously he had quite a lot of dark emotions to work his way through. He had a strong feeling all the time that he was on earth uh, with me when I was alive, that he knew better than I did about most subjects. <laughs> and he would often, um, I would often have conversations with him about um, how, he, how he would feel that um, he would often be questioning me. He would often be saying to me things like, um, for example, you know, do you think really that you should treat women the way you do? For example, was one of, the, one of the conversations we would often have. Really what he was saying to me is, I don't think you should treat women the way you do. Now, many of us do this, right? Many of us ask questions saying something, but really what we should be doing is making a statement <laughs> of how we really feel. And so he would often be asking me questions like, why do you treat women the way you do? And no matter how much explanation I'd give about the soulmates, the soul halves, and how we're equal as a soul, really by harming a woman, you're harming yourself, you know, because, because the other half of you is, is, in Peter's case, was a woman. So, so, you know, no matter how much explanation I gave of that, he still felt that he knew better than women, and he still believed that, and he didn't release the emotion of that. And so when he passed over in the spirit world, he obviously had quite a large group of emotions to deal with. Not only that, he also had set himself up as the sort of leader, the de facto leader of the others who would follow around. Uh, he was one of the oldest, and so therefore, back in uh, our day in the first century, obviously uh, age had a huge effect upon whether you'd listen to somebody or not. So 
if you were aged, generally you got far more respect than if you were younger. And so he demanded respect from many of the disciples and, and, and often received it without, without any justification. And, but of course when he passed, he also had that, that emotion to deal with. Does that make sense? So he had these series of emotions to deal with that slowed and retarded his own progression when he passed into the spirit world. Which meant that others that he had oppressed while he was on earth, including my soulmate, but also others, and that he had oppressed like John, the Apostle John, progressed faster because they had actually been on the receiving end of that kind of treatment. Does that make sense? And my, my friend Peter is still my friend, as he's always been. He's now a celestial spirit without any of these emotions. So he doesn't, he, he doesn't have this thing of like, oh, oh now AJ's talking about me. Like, Jesus, yeah, his feelings are, you know, Yeshua is talking about me again, you know, like as an example. He doesn't feel like that at all. He just, he just recognises that that was his personality and his emotional set of injuries at the time. But the effect of that is that it retarded his progression and therefore retarded the progression between him and his soulmate. You can, you can see that, can't you? If you've got lots of opposite gender injuries that you haven't worked your way through on earth, you pass in the spirit world and you're still struggling to work your way through them. So what, what happens is that you finish up retarding the progression of your combined soul. And this is why it's so important to deal with these intergender emotional injuries. So you retard the progression of, divine, of, your, of your own soul. So that means then that other people who are not having those particular injuries and also have a strong desire to be closer to God, they pass, pass you in terms of the amount of love that they receive from God. So, so you could sort of liken this journey on the divine love path that was once well, likened by a spirit uh, to a medium that I know to be like a, driving along a freeway you know, you might be all driving from here to Brisbane, right? But, you know, if we all got in the car right now together and we got in the car and drove out of the venue here and up to Butterham and then down to the highway and up to, you know, up all the way through, what we would finish up happening is some of us would get ahead of others. Some of us would pull over on the side of the road at the service station, fill up with fuel. Some of us will stop on the side of the road for other reasons. Some of us may even have a prank, like may even have a crash on the way there, right? And who knows what might happen because of that. And so there's all these different things that will happen as a result. But at the end, we're all heading towards Brisbane when we're on that highway. And it's really the same with the divine love path, is when you start comparing yourself and your own progression to others, obviously there is a damaging emotion driving that. But there is also no need for that, because in the end, this is not about me comparing my progression with yourself. It's about me wanting to be closer to God at every single moment of my existence. Right? And me wanting to be closer to love every single moment of my existence. And so you, after a while you start forgetting about what other people are doing on the path and you start focusing on what you need to do or what you want to do. Not just what you need to do, but what you want to do inside of yourself. Now, there were seven soul pairs who made that choice very early in their progression and they became the first seven pairs to reach the soul union state. Does that make sense? And, and while we had, and of course we had deep friendships throughout that entire 2,000 years of time because the more somebody wants to get closer to God and get closer to the truth, the more they are in love with my own nature and so therefore I feel far more rapport with them than a person who wants to keep resisting the divine truth all the time and keep trying to stop their progression and so forth. And you'll find the same in your own progression. Who you will draw into your field will be very much about where you're at at the time and what your desire is at the time. And that's the case all the time. So as we progress through the spheres of the spirit world, many of us then, and um, what happens is as you progress, you get assigned by God specific duties, if you like. So you have sort of like, you have like your personal life, if you could think of it that way, right? And then you have your public life, which is actually very different in many cases to your personal life. When I say different, it's not different in the sense that you are separated uh, psychologically or, or from your emotions when you're doing either. But one is a place where you've been appointed by God to do a task. The other one is just you're allowed living your life um, how you want to live your life. Now, the way to get appointed by God to do a task is by having a desire for that task. 
So the, the first seven soul pairs to enter the union state all had very, very specific desires of how much they wanted to assist people and help people and so forth. If you look at the channeled messages of the pageant messages, you'll see that like Luke was very, very present in those messages, wasn't he? And that's because he has such a desire to teach. He's always had a passion for language. He's always had a passion for truth. He's very, very similar in nature to myself. And, and so, so we, myself and Luke, have, have had a deep friendship all of our existence. Um, there's been, you see that John is very dominant or prominent in those messages. And that's because John is also very similar. He's got a very similar nature in that he, he loves to teach and help others and so forth. But there are others that are less prominent in the messages but are still ones of the 14. So, for instance, Cornelius is in the message twice, only twice. And, um, but he could have been in the messages more. But the issue that was faced by most of us in terms of delivery of truth to the earth was the person who was listening, who was Paget at this time, would have gone, Cornelius, you mean the man who killed Jesus? Um, uh, you know, I'm not sure about you, you know what I mean? So there would have been automatically, due to his, and I'm going to say there is, automatically due to his emotions about my life and who killed me and all those other things, a resistance to hearing from the people who did it. <coughs> Excuse me. And the same applies with like Judas. Judas who had plenty of opportunity to talk, uh, teach to, uh, others as a spirit under the earth. But of course there's been very few people who really want to connect to him because all they think whenever they hear of Judas is the words betrayal and Judas are like synonymous. And so there's a huge amount of emotions coming from a person towards the spirit. So, so in the end a lot of times what happened in the pageant messages wasn't a true reflection of the condition of the spirits who were speaking. So, so many of the spirits who uh, could have spoken through Paget couldn't because of specific reasons to do with his emotional condition. Does that make sense? But we as a group were very, very close with each other in the spirit world very early on and so therefore had a lot to do with each other. To, to, for me, uh, every time I've met one of the 14, it's like recognising one of my family again. Um, they don't always have the same emotion with me, mind you. In fact, most of them don't. Most of them have the opposite emotion with me. They want to avoid me like the plague. And there's a whole set of emotional reasons for that. One of the emotional reasons is if, if you meet a person who's totally open emotionally towards a specific idea or concept that is inside of you in denial, then, then interacting with that person in that moment is going to be very difficult for you. It's a bit like you you wanting to shut down all of your tears and then going and watching a movie that's just a tearful movie all the way through. You come out of it going, oh, that was boring, you know. Like, where's the action movie, you know? And the reason why is because we already have this predisposition in our soul emotionally to, to deny a certain emotional experience. And so, so most of the 14, as you've seen with Mary and Corny and Jody, um, most of the 14 have some very, very strong fears about even acknowledging their own uh, condition and who they are. Now, of course, I've been through the same process. The only difference is I didn't go through it in a public manner. That's the only difference. So the emotions that Mary's going through, the emotions that Corny's going through, the emotion that Jody's going through, that you see them going through up here, and in Justin's case, he's had the unique experience of seeing one of the 14 go through those emotions you know, in a more private setting and there's been uh, some others who have had that same situation occur but for the majority of you, you haven't noticed me go through all of those emotions. You've seen me change in two years or the two or three years that you've known me but you don't know what I've done in private. But the others of the 14 are being brave enough to demonstrate to you what they're doing in private which I feel is a very positive thing for you. Um, because it actually demonstrates what I've had to go through. Now, I've had to go through all of those things. So I've had to go through all of that same fear that nobody's going to believe me if I say the truth. I've had to go up in front of audiences talking about divine truth and just get hammered by the audience. And I've gone through lots and lots of different emotions of the process of all of that and come out of the other end by feeling like I don't have those emotions anymore. But every one of the 14, in fact, needs to go through that process emotionally. And it's not something that, that, it's an individual thing. 
You can't uh, change how you know that in another person. So while, like Corny mentioned to you in the previous, prior to the break, how he feels a lot of mistrust, and I feel his mistrust a lot. And in terms of my own emotions about it, I feel very quite sad about it at times, and I've had to process about that because for me, like I remember him and I remember my love for him and I, I feel all these feelings for him, and uh, and obviously, um, you know, I, I feel quite differently to him. Like I feel like. I know I can trust him, I know who he is, and, I, and although I know his emotional condition, um, I, I also have a deep love for him that's been a love that's been present for 2,000 years. So obviously there's a lot in that for me, right? And the same applies to, obviously, to Mary, even more so for me, and the same applies to Jody, and the same applies to every one of the 14 that I feel. But for, so we've had this really close, strong bond. And one of my deep emotions that I've had to work my way through is how we don't have that bond now. Myself and Mary are yet to re-establish that bond, let alone myself and any of, uh, of the others of the 14. Um, because it's a totally different place than what you can imagine here on Earth with regard to friendship. So, um, so I've had a lot of emotions to work my way through about how... Um, of, of all the people that reject me the most, the 14 reject me the most on the planet. And, uh, and until they probably work through that emotion, uh, it, it will be very difficult for many of them to progress very well at all. Some of them have trusted me to a certain degree for a certain period of time. And then I've hit an emotion, and uh, an emotion that's uh, caused them to go into rage and anger. And then they get into a rage and anger with me. And, and I feel that very deeply. Like far more than any of you getting angry with me do I feel one of the 14 getting angry with me because I'm obviously very open to, their, to them. And, and so I've had a lot of emotions to deal with about that, about feeling sort of um, that I've lost all my friends type emotion uh, that I've had for a long, long time. And so... Um, in the spirit world, none of those obviously feelings are there because obviously you're all together progressing and enjoying each other's company. And you have a lot more fun than what you probably believe here on earth based on processing your emotions at this point. <laughs> but um, you know, you're obviously living in bliss and so um, everything you do works beautifully and the only things that don't are related to the earth because of the condition of the earth generally. Um, Everything else we work through, obviously you're working with the will of the individual each time, but it's a beautiful place to be where you're totally harmonious with love of yourself, love of others, love of God, and just to be working your way through like that. And then having a group of friends doing it and having those group of friends in almost the same condition of yourself, it's just a wonderful experience. Like just, and many of you have already started connecting to some of those emotions, right, with pe other people here feeling that rapport, feeling that friendship, feeling that the friendship is much deeper than friends you've had for, hun for hundreds of years, uh, <laughs> friends you've had for years and years and years, right? Can you see that why, though? Because, because now you can be real, they're allowed to be real, you're allowed to be real, you're allowed to have an emotional experience right in front of them, they don't judge you for that, there's a lot of openness about that, so what, what are they feeling? What, and what are you feeling? You're feeling much more connection, a stronger bond with them. You can feel you be open and, and free with them. It's just so wonderful to have friends like that. And so we grew up, uh, you know, when I say we grew up, we grew from the, you know, first celestial sphere into the 22nd sphere state in that soul union state, experiencing a lot of that joy, uh, which I miss terribly. Um, and I've had a lot of grief uh, processed about that. I was just processing some a couple of weeks ago, in fact, uh, some more grief about that. Mm. Um, does that answer your question? <laughs> I can't even remember what your question was.